All right, good afternoon and welcome to John Box Watercolor. Today we're gonna to be painting a scene from Northern California, but before we get started, if you wouldn't mind giving this video a thumbs up, and if you like what you see, consider subscribing so that you don't miss any of my weekly tutorials. All right, I'm gonna put our reference photo over here on the right. It's a very simple scene. It's just a, a pier in a very sort of gray transitional background. It's got a really nice composition where you've got this pier almost cut in half by the left side of the uh, frame, putting it somewhere in the center to left third. And it's, it's really just a clean, clean picture and I'm, I'm very excited to paint it. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spray my palette just to get all of our paints a bit more activated. And we're gonna put a little water on our paper. Now, for this first wash, there's not much I need to worry about other than trying to keep a very, very smooth transition from sky to water. It's a very pale color and it's slightly on the cooler side. And so that's all I'm gonna be working with here. I just wanna keep this very light and very cool. All right, and that may be just a touch too warm. I always want to just kind of get that first stroke across the top working nicely and then everything else will tend to fall into place there. Now I'm going to spray this paper just a little bit more to help maintain that lightness and I want to cool this down just a little bit more and I'm just kind of dipping across my cool colors up here. I've got uh, ultramarine, cobalt, cerulean, and lavender. Those are typically the cooler colors I like to have on my palette. And be careful not to make it too cool. But I just felt that maybe our first couple of strokes were a tad too warm. That's a tad, just a tad too dark, but it will lighten. And I can kind of see it just melting before our eyes there. All right, let's continue to work in some of those cool paints. This is gonna be a fairly simple painting. And so it's gonna be up to us to incorporate some different techniques to try and make this as interesting as we can, uh, as we can make it. Now you'll notice I'm getting darker as I move my way down. That's to sort of get that atmospheric effect that we're always looking for. And I'm just kind of dipping down here to pick up some of these old warm washes just to help neutralize that wash just a bit okay that's looking very nice and as we sort of cross this halfway mark i'm going to want to really start to cool this off just a little bit more and start to darken it a little bit just to get that effect of water. Now in our reference photo, it's really a very seamless transition. You can hardly tell that there's water there. The really the only key that indicates that is gonna be the reflection of this pier, but I want ours to have just a bit more dark and cool to the lower half of this painting. Not much, but just enough to help indicate and I'm just dipping into some over here in my top left. I've got a warm gray, a neutral gray, and a neutral tint. All of these paints are Daniel Smith. And we're just gonna keep working our way down. Continuingly trying to get darker and just focusing on taking our time, enjoying the wash and just keeping everything nice and smooth. Right like that. All right, gonna really start to try to darken things up here. As we get towards that bottom. It'll also help give the illusion of kind of this horizon glow, and it'll bring the bottom of the painting closer to our vantage point. Just going for dark and cool. There we go. And put our last stroke down there. All right. 
Now, a couple of things I want to do before we just go off and let this dry. I'm going to dab out these two figures here just to keep their bodies a touch lighter because I'm going to have them sort of negatively painted around when we get into this dark pier building. I want them to kind of stand out. This figure I'm not worried about so much. They're going to be a bit darker because the horizon behind them is so light and they're kind of stepping out from the building. So we're going to, we're going to keep them a bit darker. And I was tempted to add some sort of a roof here, but I think, I think I'm just going to leave that alone. Now for our water, I do want to add just a couple of strokes in here to give the impression of ripples and variation in the water. Now I've got pretty thick paint. You'll notice, you can tell as I drag my brush through here, there's hardly any water. And you need this to be a very sort of dry, uh, dry wash when you do this because we're gonna just drag some strokes through our paper. Our paper's already very wet. If your wash is too wet, it's just gonna bleed and you're gonna lose control of it. So this feels pretty dry. And all I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna drag just a couple of lines right through there. And again, these will be larger down towards the bottom. And then as we get away from our our uh, viewpoint here, they're gonna get thinner and more spread out. Oops, that one didn't quite stay. You wanna try to keep these as, as uh, horizontal as possible. Okay, now I'm not gonna to touch this. I'm gonna let this dry and we're gonna come back and start our second wash. All right, folks, we are back and ready to start our second wash. This is now completely dry and so, we're gonna go ahead and get started with our nice pier building here. Now, I'm gonna start with the roof. And the roof in that reference photo was a fairly cool color. Well, it was interesting. It had kind of a warm top, but then a cool sort of uh, turquoise paint liner. And I think it will look really nice if we can get that to contrast with a uh, kind of a gray or creamy colored building. So I want to have this cool, but not, not too cool. I always want to neutralize my colors. All right, so I'm going to grab just a little bit of water here. Just spray our paper to keep it alive. And let's get started here. So I'm going to be very careful, and I want to just start right with that roof line there. Right like that. And I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna get a little bit more kind of some turquoise on there. Oh, that's lavender, excuse me. I'm gonna do that roof line there. There was kind of a third roof line here, but I think I'm gonna ignore that and just treat it as kind of a front building and a back building here. All right, so I'm gonna get some Chinese white here and I wanna try to mix up a fairly kind of creamy color and let that roof just kind of bleed into it. Something like that. But I'll tell you what, I think I want it to be a bit lighter than that. And so what I'm gonna do so I'm gonna grab just some of that pure Chinese white and just pull it right on our building there. I'm gonna pull it down. And I'm going to paint around. I've got some windows here. A door. And you'll see that that white gives us this very nice kind of translucent color. All right. I'll do something like that. Now the building behind, I want to darken that up a good bit. Just to help give us some contrast. 
going to leave a little bit of light there on that roof. Just to separate them. We'll do something like that. I gotta be careful here. And just a little something just to give them that separation. And I'm gonna leave some flecks of light in there as well. Now I definitely want to darken up underneath this roof line here. This roof has gone it's gone too light on me. Especially right on the eave there. Yep. All right. I'm going to just pull a line underneath there. And I think I'm trying to decide if I want to have a few negatively painted railing areas. And I think if I don't do that, there'll be too much dark on this building here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to create some lighter just railings here by creating these dark squares. And so we should get a few vertical lines going down and a horizontal line across the top. Let's see if it'll work out. I'll just abstract that little area there. Okay. All right. Let's get this. I want to get this very lavendery in these these little window areas here, and we'll darken it up in a moment. Being careful here to paint around the body. of our subject there. Let's darken that up a bit. Yep, something like that. And extend that out. Okay. Let's put a dark roof line there. Let's add just a couple of vertical lines little antennas and things. Maybe there's some other walkways. All right. And we're moving along here. I'm not entirely happy with the color of that building, but for now, I'm gonna leave it. Just keep working here. Again, sometimes you just gotta let watercolor do its thing. I want to make sure to get in nice and close around those those bodies to help isolate them. Okay. All right. Now it's time to start our vertical posts here. And I want to keep these when they're above the water. <clears throat> above the water, we're going to keep them a bit warmer. And then as they get and the reflections are created, we will get much cooler. Now the secret here is you've just, you've got to be willing to move that brush quickly. I recommend holding it towards the end so that you can really try to get a nice vertical flick downwards. The slower you are, the less straight they're going to be. There's a couple that are kind of crisscrossing. Just right like that. Got one more on that end area, okay. And I kind of like how they start to disappear there with that, that little dry brush at the end. I'm gonna pull them down just a bit lower. Gotta be very careful though. Right. Okay, now let's start working on our reflections here. Now I immediately, I'm gonna cool this down and I want to almost go for, I want to throw a little yellow in there just to green it up a little bit. Not much. I think something like that. 
a very sort of dark blue green color I think will look very nice so squinting here and we're gonna have our posts start about there and that's a bit too watery pull it over here now I've got to be really careful remember with these reflections they're gonna start off strong and then you're gonna get breaks in the reflection I'll show you what I mean by that. Okay. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to just take this brush, I'm gonna try to flatten it out a little bit, and I'm just gonna add some little dots below our posts here. Now, something to remember is that the reflections are going to be reversed, so I don't want to continue this diagonal line like this. It would break and go left because it's a reflection of what's above it. Then I'm going to grab my smaller brush here. And you really do need to have somewhat of a small brush here. And I'm just going to kind of extend those dots out. And as I get further away from the pole, <clears throat> the gaps and the intensity of the reflection are going to get longer and whiter. And I can take this little brush and kind of try to pull these pieces together just a bit better. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, this is impressionism. And so there are going to be some areas where we take a little bit of that artistic flair. All right, spinning that out. Now, I'm going to really pull this down here because I'm going to also have to add the very bottom of where we would start to see the reflection of that building up there. Okay, and I'm going to do that by grabbing that same color there. And you just have to kind of go for it here. I'm going to pull it out. I want it to be very dark right at the base of the paper, and then I'm gonna just let the brush just kind of float there. And again, it does not need to be perfect. We're just giving the idea of what's there. Now, something I don't like is I need to smooth out the transition of these, these poles down to the reflection. They get kind of thick and then thin in some places, and I wanna try to I want to try to fix that. So if you remember, we had a little bit warmer of a mixture. I just want to make sure we've got a nice clean line there. I need to add a reflection for a couple of these poles actually. Just just cleaning up a few lines. Okay, let's use our slightly larger brush to cool the mixture back down. And I need to work on, again, same process, where I kind of make a mark and then just some dots. And I come in with this brush and I start to Pull those dots to the left and right just a little bit. And you're really just kind of creating a little S formation. It does not take much to make a, uh, a sharp reflection on the water there. <clears throat> I'm going to darken this and just pull it a little bit closer. Need a little bit more water in there. Get that dark color we're looking for. Yeah, there we go. Again, we are always looking for that contrast, right? Okay. I think that looks nice. I can even just put a couple of lines down here at the bottom that could just be water reflections in general. All right. Let's start working on our figures a bit in here. And you know what? 
While this is still wet, I'm gonna put just a couple of lines in there. I may come back and dry brush a few things in, but I think for now it's fine. All right, let's work on our figures. I had mentioned earlier that the figure over here on the right side was gonna be a bit darker, and so I think I'm gonna use the same kind of mixture we've got going. You don't always want to mix up completely new mixtures when you're painting and introduce all these new colors. You want to try to keep things harmonious with one another. If you have colors on one side, you want to be able to reflect and bring those colors back into another side. I'm going to introduce a little burnt sienna. I'm just dipping it in a previous mix. Cool it off a little bit. Okay. Now for these figures. You know what I might do? It might be kind of fun. I might give this gentleman a fishing pole. I'll pull that out there and I'll... abstract that just a little bit. I don't want to draw the line down necessarily just because you, you can't really see that line. It's supposed to be see-through anyways. All right, let's grab some Chinese white here. I want to try to keep these figures on the brighter side, especially because I did not get that building as dark as it needed to be. I went too cool and so I've got to try to work to get that contrast. Let's grab some more burnt sienna. And it's not the end of the world because I will come back with some gouache and things and we'll do what we can. All right, so we've got a fellow there. And then maybe this is could be his son over here. It's a shorter individual. What color do I want to do this? You know what we're going to do? Just again, we're looking for that contrast. Since that back building is too light, I'm going to go with a, a darker figure here. I'm going to do something like that. Again, contrast should always be your determining factor in, you know, what color are you using? What, what type of edge are you using? We're always looking for contrast. That figure got messed up just a little bit, but you know what? It is no problem. Once we bring in our gouache, you're not going to be able to tell at all. Let's give... I'm going to grab a little red, just a little bit of fun here. Let's give this individual some type of a, some type of a cap. Yep. That looks nice. Okay. Just adding a couple little red spots in there, break up the shape a little bit. Now we do have some sailboats off in the distance. I definitely don't want to use that red mix for those. In general, you want to keep things that are in the distance cooler. As things are closer, you can warm them up. We're going to just use a bit of this mixture here. And again, it does not have to be perfect by any means. We're going for a very basic shape for the mast out there and then I'll have one more basic shape with another mast out there very very simple stuff if I want I can use a barely a lighter color right we wouldn't be able to see much of a, of a reflection all the way on shore here so what I'm gonna do is I mean just barely 
I'll throw just some, a few marks there underneath those boats. Okay, not much at all. All right, just something like that. All right. Just looking here. I mentioned trying to keep some railing around, but I did not do it so well. I'm wondering if I can just come back with my palette knife. Oh, look at that. And just add a couple of railings in there. I'm telling you, if you don't have one, get yourself a palette knife. It's one of those things that you don't think you'd have much use for, but I end up using mine all the time. All right, I wanted to add some birds. Maybe we'll go with this kind of warmer color here. I'm just gonna grab my smaller brush. I'm not totally confident I can control that. We'll add just a couple of dots there and then birds are easy. Just make a couple of dots and then make one or two bird shapes. And the eye will start to uh, just understand that those other little dots are birds in different shapes. Okay. And we'll put just a little darker head here on these guys. There are a couple of birds taking a break. And I'll stick one all the way up there. Okay, let's let this dry and we're gonna come back and add our finishing touches. All right, we are back. This is now completely dry and we're gonna add all of our final touches. So first thing I'm gonna do before I go for the gouache is I'm just gonna add some pure paint in a few places. This is just regular old watercolor paint, but I'm gonna pull it straight out of its pails here. I'm gonna try to not mix it with any water, just enough to get it activated. I wanted to put, I mentioned in the, oops, I mentioned in the beginning that this building had a really nice roof line on it. So I'm gonna take some lavender and just pull a bit of that, bit of that on there. Break it up a little bit and I'll put a little bit on those, on those roof lines there. Okay. Grab some warm, warm gray there. I wanna just smear that down with my finger just to darken it up in a few places. I'm gonna put one more window right above that one. Yeah, just something like that. And again, you can hardly see these over on this building. It's so dark. <clears throat> Let's do I'm just trying to clean up this figure on the left here. I'm not too worried because once we put that, once we put the um, our gouache on there, it's going to highlight perfectly and we won't have any problems. All right, let's go in. Let's add the gouache. This is always the most fun part. Nice clean brush. All right. This is just white titanium gouache. You can get it at any art supply store. But if you are into watercolor, I highly recommend you get some. It is great for pulling characters out just like that and giving them just a little bit of help they need sneak out of the shadows. I'll just put just a brief line there. I'll put a few vertical lines over on that side. It's one of the tough things with watercolors. We don't, we're always getting darker with each wash. And so we don't have paint that can really cut through and, and bring stuff out like other mediums do. Oops. And so this is kind of our one a one chance to do that. I'm just going to take my palette knife. Again, a great use for that is sc scratching out any gouache that you may have messed up. That looks great. I'll put just a little bit of a roof line on there. A little sparkle. To 
just something there. Okay. And if I can, I always like to throw a white bird or two out there, but these are so, the sky is so light, the white won't even show up. So I'll just sprinkle it on a few of these birds. Maybe something like that. Perfect. Okay, let's sign it, and then let's take a look and see what do we do well, what do we not do so well. Um, I can tell you off the bat, I am, I'm pretty pleased with the painting. I, I think I was, I had higher hopes than what I ended up with here. Um, I really liked the reference photo. The composition was very interesting. Um, I liked the little figures we added, the boats and such. I do think though that I messed up a little bit on the tone of this building. It got really, really cool. I think I should have had this building be either much warmer or I could have left it this color and gone with a warm colored roof to get some sort of contrast and bleeding in there. We just, we just didn't get that. I'm going to put a little red on his cap here. And so, there we go. And so a little bit disappointed in that. I also think our reflection here, I got these tones, they're, they're way too similar in color. I wanted the tones to be the same, the level of darkness, to really get that contrasting um, reflection, but I needed to have this way cooler down here. This needed to be much, much more of a blue color to get that clean break in object, 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 reflection, reflection, reflection. There is a little bit of a difference because we went with that warmer color for our, our beams here, our stilts, whatever you want to call them. Uh, but this this should have been much more blue. But that's okay. I think our boats look nice. Our figures are interesting. The birds are a nice touch. Overall, not not too displeased with it. Could have done better, but that is what painting is all about. So if you stayed with me all the way to the end, I really appreciate it, and I hope you learned something. Again, if you haven't subscribed, consider it. I'm going to have three to four new tutorials each week. And above all else, remember to keep on painting. Thanks.